This is Algebra 2, Lessons 1 and 2, Introduction to Probability and Sets and Probability. Both of these lessons are very, very short, but um, I'm going to cover both at the same time because it covers some important topics. So basically what we're going to be doing is looking at probability in this unit. So probability is trying to quantify chance. We want to figure out, assign a number to how likely an event is to occur. So let's take a look at some terminology that does that. We did probability back in 7th uh, or 8th grade, I think it was, so it's been a while. So let's see if we review. All right, an experiment is some process that occurs with well-defined outcomes. Basically, it's what you're doing when you're trying to figure out the odds of something happening. What, what are you doing to do it? The outcomes is when you actually do the experiment, what did you do? When you spun a spinner, rolled a dice, whatever you happen to do, what you resulted with is an outcome. All right, an event is a collection of one or more outcomes. So it's a group of events that are a group of experiments that you've done. Uh, what did you get as outcomes? And then just a collection. And then a sample space is a collection of all of the outcomes of an experiment. That's all that could happen. So an event is what you want to happen and a sample space is all of the outcomes that could happen. All right, so now let's take a look at some examples. All right, an experiment is run whereby a spinner is spun around a circle with five equal sectors that have been marked off as shown. So what is the experiment? Well, it's spinning the spinner. So you spin the spinner, and then you would note what number you have. So you would note the number. Okay, so when you spin the spinner and note the number, what could be one outcome? Well, suppose you uh, spin a four. That could be one outcome. Now, is that all of the outcomes you could have had? No, you could have gotten any outcome one through five on that. So at one, at one outcome that you got, you could have spun a four. You could have spun a two. You could have spun a three or whatever you wanted to do. All right, so what is the probability of spinning the spinner and landing on an odd number? What is the event here? Well, we are trying to spin an odd number. That's our event. Okay, so what outcomes fall into the event? Well, the outcomes you could get a 1, a 3, or a 5. Those are the possible outcomes that you could get. So what is the probability of spinning the spinner and landing on an odd number? Well, probability is defined as the number of ways that you, or things you want to happen out of the total ways it could happen. So, um, probability of getting an odd number, how many ways could we get an odd number? Well, there's one, two, three ways to do it. Out of a total number of outcomes, how many total outcomes are there? Well, on the spinner, there's five outcomes. Some we want, some we don't. So probability is three out of five. Now, probability can be listed as a fraction, three out of five. You can make it into a decimal, three divided by five is 0 0.6, or you can make it into a percent, 0 0.6 is 60%. So they're all equivalent, they mean the same thing. So probability is what you want to happen out of the total ways it could happen. So to summarize what probability is, the basic definition of probability is the probability of event E occurring is given by the ratio P of E, so like we said for the odd number, spinning an odd number. So the number of ways that you, outcomes that fall into the event. So this would what you want to happen. Okay, number of ways. Okay, and then N of S is the number of outcomes that fall in the sample space. So basically, this is all possible outcomes that you could have. So there were five numbers on that spinner. So there are five different outcomes that you could have got, even though we didn't want some of them. That is all the possible ways that you have. All right, so given the above definition, between what two numbers must all the probabilities lie? And explain. All right, so when you are doing a probability, if something never happens, how many ways could it happen? Well, that would be zero. Zero would be never happen. If you um, did spun and, did, and got a six, you can't do that. All right, so that can't ever happen. But what if the, uh, you wanted to spin and get a number one through five? 
Would that always happen? Yeah. So that would be 5 out of 5. That would be 1. So all probabilities will always lie between 0 and 1. So probability always falls, probability event always falls between 0 and 1. Okay? 0% of the time it happens, 100% of the times it happens. So 0 and 1, that's the highest you can go. All right, now let's take a look at the theoretical probability. With theoretical probability, we don't actually have to run the experiment to determine the probability of an event. We just simply have to know the number of outcomes in the sample space and the number of outcomes that fall into our event. So let's take a look at a different scenario. A fair coin is flipped three times and the result is noted each time. The sample space consists of ordered triples, such as H, H, T. You spun an H first, then an H second, and then a T. Okay, heads, heads, and then tails. Okay, so let's take a look at a tree diagram. All right, so if we flip a coin the first time, our outcomes that we could have, you could either get a head or you can get a tail. All right, now, if you got a head the first time, what could you get the second time? You could get a head or a tail. All right, if you got tails the first time, you could get a head or a tail the second time. All right, and then the third flip, you could get head or tails again, head or tails again, head or tails again, and head or tails again. So you have basically three branches. This is your first um, flip, this would be your second flip, and then the last branches would be your third flip. So let's list the outcomes of the order triples, just follow them down the line. So going down the line here, we have head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail. So that's all the branches here. That's all the possible ways that you could have done this with heads first. All right, now for tails, you just follow the branches down. Tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and tails, tails, tails. So how many possible outcomes are there? There are actually eight, okay? Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. How many outcomes did you have in the first one? You had two. How many outcomes do you have in the second flip? You're still going to have two outcomes. And the third flip, you're going to have two. Two times two times two is eight outcomes. So that's the number of outcomes that you could have. They're just multiplied together. All right, now we can use the sample space and the tree diagram to find the following probabilities. What's the probabilities of getting all heads? Well, how many of these have all heads? Just one. That would be H, H, H. So the probability of that is one out of eight. Exactly two heads. Well, how many have exactly two heads? Well, let's see. This one does. This one does. Whoops and this one does. So there are three of them that have exactly two heads. We have heads, heads, tails, head, tail, heads, and tails, heads, heads. There are three of them out of the total eight. And the probability of all heads or all tails, well, that would be heads, 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 tails, tails, tails. There would be two out of eight. If you want to reduce it, you can, is one-fourth. So that is theoretical probability. So picking a tree diagram or a sample space can help you organize your thoughts. All right, now sometimes we have to quantify chance by using observations that have been made in the real world. This is called empirical probability. So the probability is still the same idea, but you just have to use the survey information that you have. So a survey was done by a marketing company to determine which of the three sodas was preferred by people in a blind taste test. The results are shown below. Find the empirical probability that a person selected at random from this group would prefer soda B. Express your answer as a fraction as a decimal average to two decimal places, which is the standard. Okay, so we want people, how many people prefer soda B? Well, soda B would be 24. Out of soda B, out of the total number of outcomes. Well, it would be 24 out of 53. So P of soda B, probably getting soda B, prefer so to be, is 24 out of 53. Okay? Find the empirical probability the person selected at random from this group would not prefer soda. So we're looking for the probability of not soda A. 
So how many of these are not soda A? Well, we know it's going to be out of 53. Not soda A would be 18 plus 11 is 29 out of 53. So if you divide this out, 24 out of 53 is approximately 0.45 or 45%. And then 29 out of 53 should be about 66% if you divide it out, so 0.66. All right, now let's continue on with sets and probability. Now what we're going to be looking at is we want to be looking at a set definition and then apply it to a sample space and outcomes. So continuing on what we have, the set definition is a set is simply a collection of things that satisfy criteria. So the things that are contained in the set are called the elements of the set. So the set A is defined as the collection of all integers that are greater than 0 and less than 10. Okay, so set A would be the set in roster form. You put the little curly brackets. Greater than 0 and less than 10 integers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that would be um, the set of integers that are between 0 and 10. Okay, and it's roster form because a roster is basically just a list. Okay, I'm not going to do the Venn diagram for this. So I'm going to skip that. But I'm going to go down here to my next value. A subset is any set whose elements are contained within another set. So part of another set is a subset. Give two possible rules that can define subsets of A and then write sets B and C in roster form. And would they have any elements in common? Well, they could. Depends on what your subset is. So let's say that set B's definition is the even integers. Okay, so if I wrote this in roster form from set A and it wanted to be a subset, well, let's see. The even integers would be 2, 4, 6, and 8. So there's one set. All right, so what if I wanted to do another subset? Let's say um, set C's definition is the multiples of 3. Okay, so from this set as a subset, that would be 3, 6, and 9. So, do sets B and C have any elements in common? Yeah. So, in common is called the intersection. Intersection of the sets is going to be 6. And we'll be talking about intersections soon. But these two have sets in common. So, do they have to have something in common? No. A subset is just a smaller set made from a larger set. That's what a subset is. All right, let's do a little more probability. So, consider in the experiment we first toss a coin and note the outcome, then roll a six-sided die and note the outcome. So let's write a set of ordered pairs that represent all outcomes of the experiment. So for example, um, H4, you flipped a uh, coin, got a heads, and then rolled a four. So the list of all the outcomes is going to be the sample space. So we could get heads one, heads two, heads three, heads four, heads five, heads six, or you could get tails 1, tails 2, tails 3, tails 4, tails 5, and then tails 6. All right, so using this sample space, write a set of ordered pairs that represents the event of getting a tail and an even number. Call this set A. All right, so if set A, what out of this set is a tail and an even number? Well, that would be T2, T4, and T6. There's my set. So, what is the probability of getting an A? Well, probability of getting A is 3 out of how many in total? Well, there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 outcomes. So your probability of getting um, a tail and an even number is 3 out of 12, or 1 fourth. Okay, the complement of set A is all the events in sample space S that do not fall in set A. So basically, set B is everything in the sample space that is not A. So that would be H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, T1, T3, and T5. That's my sample space. So what's the probability of getting B? Well, there are 9 that are not in the sample space out of 12, so that will be 3 fourths. So look at these two numbers. What do they add up to? P of A plus P of B 
should equal 1.